Rest is a means of pleasing God. Summary. Rest is a higher appeal than satisfying our need for it. Rest is about pleasing God by entering it. God takes pleasure in our rest and calls us to rest as a means of pleasing Him and enjoying His delight. Thus, when resting in God proceeds working for God, we are better able to rise to the occasion and work as commissioned by God with a clear perspective. For about 25 years, I have established a weekly practice of what I call Sabbath rest. To begin, I, 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 to begin with, I found I was desperate for such rest in my life. But at times now, I, I don't feel so tired, and there are days I say, you know, I don't feel tired. I don't think I'll take a Sabbath. But then I remember the title of my book and in many verses, For God's Sake, and it's a Sabbath out of the Lord. I don't feel in particular need, I may say, for rest this week, so I think I'll skip it. Then I think, but God takes pleasure in my rest, so for His sake I am going to go and rest and be quiet and enjoy just being. Imagine that you were a grandmother or grandfather, and you have a grandchild that comes to visit you. But this grandchild comes running in and first of all uh, uh, says, what can I do for you? And you tell this grandchild, just sit and enjoy a time with me. Just be with me. A and you say, well, I, I think I'll do your dishes. Uh, you don't need to do the dishes, the grandfather or grandmother says, just sit down. But you go through and you find some dishes you think are dirty, so you do them. And uh, the grandparent says, come and sit with me and let's have some coffee or tea together. And I just want you to be with me. No, 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 no. I think that uh, you need some work on your floors. I'm going to scrub your floors. So you go and scrub. And you're doing all these things serving God. And uh, uh, serving, that is, the grandfather or grandmother who represent God. And he says, or she says, come back and sit down. Let's just sit. I just want you to be with me. Oh, no, 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 no. There must be something else I have to do here. How can I, can I fix your hair, you know? And you're trying to do something for the grandparent, trying to do when all they want is your time to just be. And finally, when you are exhausted, you fall asleep on the couch across from your grandparent, and God takes or the grandparent, I should say, takes pleasure in your sleep. I like the child. I like the child when he or she is sleeping. I take pleasure in that. It's just unfortunate that the child can't enjoy my, my privileged presence. And together we could just be without creating, without doing, without cleaning, without... God loves you but He really loves you when you rest and enter into His holiness. There's one more facet about my needs versus God's needs. We, by resting, submit to God reordering our world so that we see that God is at the center and we revolve around what God wants and His pleasure versus our pleasure. A famous preacher in America by the name of Erwin Lutzer has written a book. Long ago he wrote this book, Failure, the Back Door to Success. And Lois is going to read uh, this very interesting uh, uh, render, uh, presentation about the astronomer. Copernican Revolution. Remember Copernicus? He was the astronomer who rejected the theory that the planets rotated around the Earth. He found it difficult to explain planetary motion according to this scheme. So he proposed a new theory, namely that the Sun is the center of the universe. With this theory, he found that the motion of heavenly bodies could be more easily explained. I, need, I knew I needed my own Copernican Revolution. 
Lutzer is explaining. Until now, my world was at the core of my life. God was worked in only when needed. Now I decided that he would be on center stage and my world, schedules, sermons, and exams would rotate around him. This, of course, necessitated adjustments. As we conclude session three, I ask the question, do you need a P Copernican revolution? That is, you think the rest of the world, your people, your friends, including God, they revolve around you. You are the center. You are, shall we say, selfish. It's all about what you want or need. And so you are like a consumer. You may be what we call a consumer even of rest. You only rest for your sake so you can go back to work and work harder. You consume it like it was some kind of fuel in the tank of an automobile or fuel like food. And you only do it so you can go about accomplishing and living out your life for your sake. Or if you come to the point where the world doesn't revolve around you and God doesn't revolve around you, but you are to revolve around him and you'll never get rid of this restlessness in your soul until you realize that the Lord is to be Lord and you are not the center of the universe, the center of your life. He is and you are to go around him. And even your rest is an offering unto him that he may change you make you holy for his sake, for his goodness. Have you had a personal Copernican revolution or a Lordship of Jesus Christ revolution? In what ways is your life rotating around God, the center of your life, your universe, your world? How do you plan to please God with rest in the future? And this is a pivotal point if we can get to the point where we rest no longer for ourselves, just like we came to a point where we no longer live to serve ourselves, we want to serve God, now I want to rest for His sake and not just mine. This is a powerful thing. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank You for creating us that we might not only enjoy Your rest, the pleasure of being creative ourselves, that we might enjoy you, what you've made, your holiness and your deliverance in our lives. Pray, O oh Lord, that each of us would have such a revolution of the Lordship of Jesus Christ, that we would want to please you not just with deeds, but with our rest. And we would be like that grandchild that could take the pleasure of sitting with a grandparent, grandmother, grandfather, and just be in the arms, not needing to sleep, not needing to serve, not needing to be restless any longer, but just rest in your arms. Lord Jesus, may we glorify you in all we do and say, including our rest. In Jesus' name, amen. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com.